human quest to overcome disease, to overcome death, the Gilgamesh project. Ask scientists who are studying the genome, or ask scientists who try to connect a brain to a computer, or try to connect a mind inside the computer, why they do all this? Why do you want to do this? Nine out of ten times, you will get the same standard answer. We are trying to connect a brain to a computer. We are trying to create a brain inside a computer. We are trying to decipher the secrets of DNA in order to cure diseases. This is the standard answer. And this is the standard answer because nobody can really argue with it. It sounds wonderful to cure diseases. Why not? Even though the implications of breaking the code of the DNA or the implications of creating a mind inside a computer are far, far more dramatic than curing this disease or that disease. This is still the standard justification for all these scientific uh, projects because this is justification that convinces everybody. Nobody can argue with it. And this is why the Gilgamesh project, the attempt to overcome disease, old age and death, is the flagship of science. It serves to justify everything that science does. Whenever there is doubt, we just think about that and we say, okay, go on. More and more scholars say that what really awaits us in the future is the singularity. Now, what is the singularity? The singularity is a point in which our world of meaning collapses completely. A point when everything we know about ourselves and about the world, all our hopes and fears and so forth, our very identity, they will all become irrelevant. We might fast be approaching another future point of singularity in which our known world of meaning will simply collapse. The pace of technological development is so rapid that we will soon come to the point when Homo sapiens is replaced by completely different beings who possess not only different physics, but also different cognitive and emotional abilities and experiences. This is something that most people, most sapiens, find extremely troublesome, extremely disconcerting. Here, that the next stage of history will include not only technological and organizational transformation, but also fundamental revolutions in human consciousness and human identity. The most important question facing humankind today is what do we want to become? This question is called the human enhancement question. In what way do we want to enhance humankind? If our superhuman successors indeed function on a different level of consciousness, or perhaps will possess something beyond consciousness, which we can't conceive, then these beings, it's very doubtful that they will have any interest in Christianity or Islam, that they will organize themselves in a communist or capitalist way, or even that they will have genders like us, males and females. All this will disappear. Most people prefer simply not to think about this possibility. Is it acceptable, for example, to make genetic experiments on living human beings? Is it okay to do experiments on aborted fetuses or on stem cells? Is it ethical to clone sheep? Is it ethical to clone chimpanzees? What about humans? Now, all these questions are important. I don't want to say that they are not important. But it is naive to imagine that we might simply hit the brakes and stop 
scientific projects that are upgrading Homo sapiens into a different kind of being. 